Next DC is a new age company and was a darling of the stock market until it had a significant dip, share price wise, this year. But lately it has rebounded back. So let's get the CEO, Craig Scroggy, to explain the drop and the wonderful bounce up. Now I've got to say, I don't hold your shares and I hate myself for not doing it because I know Simon Bond talked a lot of our viewers into it and uh, you, you've, you've delivered. But there were some moments there. What, what, and before we, I guess we get to that, some people don't know what you do. It's a great name, Next DC. When you Google you, you're competing with Washington, which is not easy. <laughs> but um, what does it do? Peter, we provide data center services essentially for big <coughs> global providers of cloud computing solutions. Yep. Uh, we also serve all of the domestic telecommunications providers. If you sell computing on demand or you have uh, computers that you host, mm. we provide world-class tier three facilities right around Australia mm. that essentially is, is like a hotel for a computer. Mm. Okay, so, so you've been born out of the cloud. Is that what you're saying? Essentially, we are the infrastructure provider to all of those companies today that are being born in the cloud. Yeah, yeah. And, and people don't get this. People think there actually is a cloud. <laughs> they, 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 they think there's a cloud. But really, there's just a, an organisation like yours that makes the cloud process possible. Yeah, essentially, we provide the infrastructure support services yeah. for all of those companies who are selling some type of computing service on demand. Mm. Since we've moved to a consumption economic model, uh, enterprises don't want to buy and own all of those computing assets themselves. Hardware is out. Yeah. Nobody wants to run their business that way. And even more so, if you're a small business, you don't need to take the responsibility of owning and operating that infrastructure. You can essentially pay for exactly what you use mm. and get great economic return. Mm. That was very difficult to do in the past. So who are your best customers? Many of our best customers. Yeah, no, best talk you, you ain't leaving anyone out. <laughs> but, but who are some of the customers that typically would use your stuff? Uh, we, we support organisations uh, both internationally and domestically. Yeah. Our best domestic customers, people like Australia Post, yeah. they host their critical infrastructure services with us. Yeah. Um, we support Telstra, we support Optus mm. uh, and, and many other uh, enterprises mm. that provide computing services, both that are sellers of computing yeah. but also that provide any type of economic. How many rivals have you got in the country? Uh, really, there are many data centre providers, but very few of them are carrier and vendor neutral. So essentially, we are the Switzerland of, of the uh, data centre industry. Nice name. Our best customers um, are data centre owners and operators in a lot of cases themselves. Yeah. What's changed is, is that the size, the scale and the efficiency of the industry has changed. Mm. We build brand new, world class, very large scale, so 10, 15, 20,000 square metre buildings that house hundreds of millions of dollars. Is worth it like, like, like one big server in a building, is it? It's thousands and thousands of them. Yeah. Um, and until, until you see the, the size and scale of that, it's very, very difficult. So to, when, to when this was first explained here, did you just say, get out of here? Well, or did I've, you know the industry so well? I spent 20 years in, in the IT industry. Okay, yeah. so it wasn't a big surprise to you. For me, I'm saying get out of here. Yeah, look, when you consider how quickly technology is, is moving, <laughs> the rate of growth of information, every two years, mm. the entire amount of information that exists in the world doubles. Mm. Now, that information growth is only accelerating because whether we're on Facebook, people are tweeting about your program, mm. uh, we're watching videos online, we're sharing them uh, um, yeah, with our crazy. friends. And that information is, is backed up and stored yeah. and recalled. And, and we're a digital society today. Mm. So all of the online shopping uh, th that we do, ultimately all of that commerce has to go through the, the internet and mm. we provide a place for that, that information to be stored. And, and are we at the same time as you guys are expanding, is technology helping you to actually shrink the amount of hard stuff you have to do to do the job? You know how we went down to a silicon chip, which you know, replaced rooms in GE when they first started creating computers. Is the same thing happening? They're shrinking the big stuff so you can, you can have a lot more of the small stuff to cover for the unbelievable growth of all this YouTube and um, you know, data stuff you're talking about? It is, because Moore's law is true. And, and essentially, we get more computing power into a smaller amount of space. It comes at a cheaper price. So when we think about being able to leverage that opportunity and get a, a better return on our, our economic dollar, yeah. we can consume more services today than we would have been able to afford in our own right as little as only a couple of years ago. Yeah. Okay. So why did the share price fall?
you went up, everyone loved you, <laughs> then you fell. So you'll see, you, know, you say the market was crazy, but we'd like a better answer. <laughs> Look, one of the challenges, obviously, Peter, of, of being a publicly listed business yeah. uh, is, is that the market um, expects progress consistently. Yes. You know, we were born, essentially, as, as a listed company. The mm. company was founded in May of 2010 by one of Australia's most successful technology entrepreneurs, Bevan Slattery. Mm. Now, the company uh, literally started in May and we listed on the ASX in December of 2010. Mm. Starting that journey of building a company, building infrastructure assets that take years to build and hundreds of millions of dollars to support, yeah. the, the market gets excited about the opportunity, mm. but then sometimes the, the reality of, of the journey and the time it takes to, to build a, a world-class business yeah. um, takes time. And as you know, the, yeah. the markets go up and down. Yeah, well, well I've seen that recently with zero. Zero started at 12, went to 42, and has come right down to that area again. Yeah. It doesn't mean that the, the company's potential has been you know, undermined or Thing, but the analysts got too excited and then the market got too excited yep. you, you were basically in the same sort of situation you yeah think? Look, i mean we're, we're excited about the company when we yeah. look at um, the opportunity the rate of growth of information the type of services that are being provided to consumers today um, you know we've got an opportunity to tap into computing power that has never existed in our lifetime yeah. and every consumer can access this whether you're a large enterprise or you're a small business you can take advantage of that today uh, craig are you into the us and places like that we're not <laughs> Um, operating outside of Australia today. Right. Uh, we've spent the last four years building a world-class network right across Australia. Mm. Uh, and we're now at the point, we had our AGM last Friday, we upgraded our earnings guidance, we're making great progress <coughs> domestically. But this is our first year of national operation right around Australia. Once we've bettered down the Australian network, uh, we'll certainly consider those opportunities. If, if I was able to construct a, a graph of the success of your company, what is the other graph that's going to be tracking it? Is, it. is it the economic growth and the confidence factor of Australia or is the demand for your services nearly desensitised to economic growth? Well, importantly, depending on the type of, of business that you're in, mm. you need a, a large amount of computing capacity, whether you've got hundreds of, of workers or in some case thousands. Mm. Essentially, our business um, is right in the tailwind of one of the fastest growing industries in the world today and, and, yeah. and that is everything that is online. Yeah. Whether you're producing movies, sharing content, building the next billion dollar app mm. that, that's going to revolutionise the way yeah. uh, we as consumers live our lives today. The growth in the internet of things. Es essentially we are an infrastructure provider, a, a long term infrastructure provider, mm. supporting the growth of those industries. So I'm thinking you know, as I'm listening to you, if for example the, the Government Reserve Bank says next year we grow below trend, 2.75%, mm -hmm. but another economist like Paul Bloxham from HSBC thinks it's going to be 3.25% uh, or even a bit higher. Mm. And if, if Paul is right and, and the government is wrong, and there's more growth and there's more businesses and those businesses are investing more and growing their businesses, would you expect more business? Absolutely. Yeah. For, for us, and that would drive your profits and your earnings? Just because organisations are changing, you know, one of the big, the, the most fascinating things that's happening in our industries today is, is the innovator's dilemma. Old yeah. companies are struggling to work out how to change to compete against these new world businesses. Mm. Those new world businesses have no legacy. Mm. They're not stuck in old revenue models where they need to sell all their products up, up front. Mm. They can build long-term long sustaining, uh, you know, monthly recurring revenue streams. Yeah. So, Companies are also getting better, even those organisations that are, are not growing as quickly, they're looking at how to use their capital differently. They don't want those assets on their balance Craig, sheet. Craig, important so. question to me seems like this, and I hate to go over top, we're running out yep. of time, is that how quickly can you respond to a massive increase in demand? Is it a, you know, so do you just have a lot of excess capacity to, to, to accommodate a market that you think will be there? Or if the market actually grows, say, 4 or 5%, and we're surprised, can you respond quickly to it? It's a, it's a business where there is a fine balance between the amount of capital that we put in advance um, and how long it takes, obviously, to get a return on that. We're an infrastructure provider. It takes us a year to two That's years nice to question. build the scale. Yeah. Ultimately, we try and keep enough capacity on hand to stay about a year in front of our customers, yeah. but, but that can evaporate very, very quickly because the rate of growth is, is exciting. It's phenomenal. Yeah. So I guess the end result would be, even if you ran out of capacity, it would be in the context of making more profits because you've actually blown your capacity. Yeah, that's true. Okay, Craig. Good luck with it. Thanks, and,
An interesting story. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Coming up, we'll try to understand the full ramifications of the China free trade deal.